What's poppin' everyone? Tara Lynch here with the next big thing, the video cast sharing all things infotainment. How can you continue the conversation about inclusion, especially with children? Well, author and illustrator Brooke Aiello joins us to discuss her book series, Tolerance Tykes. Plus, we go over this week's top stories and trends. Let's jump right in. in the nation's capital on Monday, the Supreme Court struck down a Louisiana law that would have restricted access to abortions and abortion clinics. The split 5-4 decision said the law placed an undue burden on a woman's constitutional rights. And moving to the South and West, states like Florida, Arizona, and Texas are seeing higher case numbers, and hospitalizations due to COVID-19. Now, some of these states that are seeing the spikes in numbers were the first to reopen, which is causing other states like Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey to rethink their reopening plans. And finally, overseas, U.S. intelligence is continuing to investigate electronic data and intercepts, suggesting that Russia offered bounties to the Taliban to fight and kill U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. Now, the White House has remained very quiet on this topic as Democratic lawmakers continue to question the Trump administration's connection to Russia. Acceptance and inclusion are topics that are resonating around the world with people of all ages. But how can children learn about this? Well, the Tolerance Tykes book series aims to provide the right mix of storytelling interactive discussion and more. And today I'm very excited to welcome the author and illustrator of Tolerance Tykes, Brooke Aiello. Brooke, thank you so much for joining me today on The Next Big Thing. Thank you for having me, I'm excited to be here. So Tolerance Tykes is a book series that you launched in 2017. So break it down for us, what is Tolerance Tykes and what inspired you to create the series? Okay, so Tolerance Takes Teaching Tools for a Better Tomorrow is a series of books I wrote to teach children about inclusion, acceptance, and self-love. It all started before 2017. I had written a poem about what it felt like to be a child with anxiety. And I sat on that poem for a little bit, and I never really used the poem, never put it anywhere. It was on a crinkled up piece of paper. And it came to me, I was like, why not write a book for everybody and have them all in one classroom and have each child have their own experience that they can teach other children through lesson plans, through poetry and art, and, and hopefully it would touch a lot of lives. And you've penned three books so far with a different group of characters or children in, in your class, in Miss Brooks' class. So talk to me a little bit about how you structure uh, every book. Okay, so I think it's important in the beginning of the books to have all the children together. So I introduce each child together in one story so you can get an idea of who's in the class and how they connect with each other. And then separately, I have a four-page spread for each child. So they'll have their class photo. They'll have a poem of their life. So a child can listen to the rhyming, kind of hold on to what the story means. And then afterwards, there are facts, there are uh, questions that you can ask your uh, students, your children, and kind of breaks it down like that. So you can read it as a whole book or you can break it up between topics. And we all need to learn more about tolerance and inclusion. So how can parents or teachers or whomever is the person maybe reading the book to the child, how can they use it as you know a teaching device uh, for kids around the world? I think it can be used in many ways. I do think that we have to remember that children are always watching, they're always listening. And right now in the world, it's so divided that I feel like we need to really hone in on what they're seeing and kind of cradle them and, and give them the right information and soften it a little. Um, I think the book can be used, like I said before, it can be used reading it as in its entirety and giving a child the information before they're um, exposed to anything. I think it could be used in a way that, um, like a case-by-case -case basis. So if your child comes home from school and says, I met someone that has, is, is blind or deaf or has Down syndrome, you can flip right to that section and say, well, let me answer these questions. Let me tell you a little bit about it. And it kind of makes it easier for the parents to um, 
to talk about it. And you know, we've talked about the past and, and how you launched Tolerance Tykes, but what is the future for this book series? So I feel as though something like this has endless possibilities. I would like to continue writing children's books. I'd like to keep it going. Um, there are so many issues that need to be discussed for children and, and so many lifestyles that need to be celebrated and, and learned about. I do think I would like to venture into maybe television maybe get a, a series or a movie or um, some kind of product that can go along with the book and, and really make it a, a useful tool for everyone. I, um, I currently do custom children's books as well. So if you have a child or a student that is going through something and they need you know, to have their story known or they need some comfort in the fact that they're not alone, I can do a custom book and I'll write and illustrate it and hopefully that helps more of an ind individualized case as well. A celebration of all different types of people. Brooke, thank you so much for joining me today on The Next Big Thing. Thank you. And you can get the book on Amazon.com or ToleranceTypes.com as well. Awesome. We'll visit there. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brooke, for coming on and telling us a little bit about how we can continue the conversation about inclusion with children around the world. We move on now to the trends we love this week, and we start with Queen Bey. Beyonce was awarded the prestigious BET Humanitarian Award on Sunday. Beyonce's initiative, called the Bay Good Initiative, was created to help her hometown, Houston, Texas, following the damage that was caused by Hurricane Harvey. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Beyonce provided testing, mental health services, and dedicated a wing of a local Houston hospital to families in need. The Bay Good Initiative has also provided scholarships and funding to historically black colleges and universities. And she's also funded various other initiatives across the globe, from Flint, Michigan, all the way to Burundi. Congratulations, Beyonce. After pushing back the restart date several times, the lights of Broadway will remain dark until January 2021. This extends the longest production shutdown in the history of the Broadway League. But if you're a musical theater fan at home, don't worry, because there are a lot of things coming your way that will help you get into the spirit of seeing your favorite musicals. Now, it might not be right on Broadway, but these are some great things that are happening from right on your TV screen and your couch at home. Now, this week, one of the most anticipated releases ever is happening. Hamilton the Musical is coming out on Disney+. Plus. Yes, I'm going to say it one more time. Hamilton the Musical is coming out on Disney Plus on Friday. So make sure you are around for that. And if you're a musical theater fan like me and who couldn't get tickets to the show, you are in luck because this is your shot to be in the room where it happened. Now, this was filmed with the original cast and is not a movie adaptation. So dress up, roll out the red carpet, get your favorite theater snacks, and sit back and enjoy the show on your television at home. Lin-Manuel Miranda also announced he is pushing back the launch date for his movie adaptation of In the Heights, and he is also working with Disney Animation on a new animated musical set in Columbia. So musical theater fans, do not worry because there are so many musicals that we can see at home in preparation for our return to the Broadway seats. Sleep is very important and it is our trend for you this week. Now during this quarantine, there have been days where I feel super sluggish and run down and tired, but I've made a few adjustments to my sleep cycle, which helps me to stay super productive and active and focused during the day. So here are some of my tips to help you get those Z's at night and wake up feeling super energized to start your day. The first tip is try to get up and go to bed at about the same time every day. So say you go to bed at 11, you wake up at 7.30, and you wanna to try to do that every day of the week. That will get your body into a natural sleep rhythm, which will help you when it's time to get up and when it's time to go to bed. And hopefully you'll have a deeper sleep. Now the second tip is try to avoid sleeping in. So as I just said, you wanna make sure that you're trying to get up at about the same time every day. Now, if you have a late night or a very early morning and you need to catch up on some sleep, I recommend trying to take a daytime nap, which is our next tip, naps. 
you don't want to take too long of a nap because then you might not fall asleep at night. So try to keep your naps to about 20 minutes and in the early afternoon, that way you can fall asleep and catch up on some sleep if you need to from the night before. And our final tip is at the end of dinner, sometimes you just feel super sluggish, you sit down on your couch and you might doze off for a few minutes. You want to try to avoid doing that. If you feel that tiredness coming on right after dinner in the early evening, get up and try to do something mentally stimulating. That can be washing the dishes, calling a friend, going for a quick walk. All of these things will get your body and your mind active again so that you can go to bed at your normal time. If you go to bed super early, it will throw off your entire sleep cycle and man, it will just be hard to recreate that sleep cycle again. So try to follow these tips and hopefully it will help you sleep and stay productive during the day. Okay, all you cool cats and kittens, that's all the time we have this week on The Next Big Thing. If you have something big to share, put it in the comments below or feel free to send us a direct message. We love hearing from you guys. Also, come back next week for more and remember, when you need the news that pops, I'll be here with The Next Big Thing.